This coin just hit top 10 on DeFi Llama by chain revenue and I'm opening up right now. And it's actually number seven because the revenue has been growing in the past several days. So it is the only proof of work coin on here actually, which is very interesting. And the revenue comes not from fees, not from any external, you know, DeFi applications. It's just merge mining. You may be familiar with it from merge mining of Litecoin and Dogecoin together. So the same hash rate can be used to secure multiple proof of work networks. This can only be done if the hashing algorithm is the same. So for Dogecoin and Litecoin, they're both using script and therefore they can be merged mined. And Coin Network can be merged mined or it is actually merged mined right now with four other blockchains that includes Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Dogecoin and Ravencoin. However, there is a key difference between the merge mining traditionally and how it happens in SOAP in Kwai for this revenue engine. Unlike traditional merge mining, where the miner receives both of the coins, here the merge mined rewards from other chains, apart from Kwai, are received and captured at the protocol level. And then they are sold on the open market and then Kwai is bought instead. And then the Kwai is burned. On the surface to miners, it looks like they're just mining Kwai and receiving pretty high block rewards for that. So if we open just like hashrate.no and open like SHA-256 mining or honestly GPUs for Kapow, uh, yeah, we see like Kwai here for Kapow. It's not on all of them, but it is quite, you know, pretty present all over. If we open ASICs, um, there is also quite a bit here. And now let's go to the SOAP dashboard and see what the current benchmark numbers are. So since launch of the protocol, that's about 18 days as of recording of this video, over 179,000 in USD has been acquired in revenue through this mechanism. And that is during the, you saw that on hashrate.no, that is during sending quite lucrative block rewards for miners. And uh, the 24 hour revenue is almost 16K. So we are climbing up that um, DeFi Llama dashboard and over 2.97 billion was secured in transactional value on the four chains that are being merged mined. And all that was used for Kwai buybacks, which is really, really neat. Because if you open coin market cap, you see that in the last like week or month, you see that the action that this revenue engine seems to be working well. So Kapow hash rate is uh, 800 giga hash, a bit over that. Uh, SHA-256 hash rate is 157 peta hash. And the script hash rate is 7.26 tera hash. So if you have any of those ASICs for SHA-256 or script, feel free to join. And for Kapow, if you have a GPU, you can also join. Joining a pool is the easiest way, but you can of course run a node and solo mine. And a very cool update that's coming next week. And hopefully by the time I release this video, it will already be out. Uh, the update is called Stratum X. And it allows basically for much better experience for solo miners. First of all, you won't have to run a node anymore. You can basically connect to a free public endpoint. There will be zero fees, no KYC, no anything. And all the rewards will be coming directly to your wallet. So self-custody, everything properly done. And... Apart than that, you can also still, you will still be able to run your own node and contribute to the, you know, distributed network of nodes that are allowing people to mine permissionlessly and without any kind of pool fees or centralization risks. Solo mining deserves a separate video for Coin Network because there is not only this Stratum X release that will be really significant for all the ASIC and GPU miners, there are also work shares that allow people, even with single ASICs or GPUs, to receive consistent rewards without joining a pool. Work share is a kind of, um, when you don't have enough hashing power to contribute a full block to the network, you can still contribute some and still receive a portion of the rewards. It is actually not vanilla proof of work. It's slightly optimized with the novel consensus mechanism called proof of entropy minima. You can read the white paper if you'd like, but the TLDR, it's an optimized, more efficient version of proof of work where you reduce the number of forks. Uh, regular proof of work is kind of like zeros and ones. Zeros means when the miner finds a block, it's invalid and a one, it's kind of valid. So miners are just mining and they can get a zero or a one. And in coin network, you can think of it as there can be any number between zero and one because coin network measures and looks at the whole block and all the work that the miners put into the block. So it can be 0 0.69420, whatever. 
but it can be literally anything else. And um, this kind of more precise measurement of how much work was put into each block allows it to have a more efficient processing of the blocks and also makes it deterministic. So apart from being more efficient, POEM or the consensus mechanism also allows Quay Network to use sharding in its architecture. So sharding is a way of uh, kind of splitting the blockchain into multiple blockchains so that the processing can be happening in parallel. It's not novel technology. It's uh, been used by other blockchains. For example, there is NIR. In Quay Network, you have dynamic sharding. So that means only as throughput increases and demand for block space increases, you add more shards. So if there are like five transactions per second on the network, there really is no need to have more shards because each of them can process about 700 to 1000 transactions per second. So really, once you get about 1000 transactions per second on one shard for let's say 10 days consistently, the network automatically detects that there is a need for more throughput by detecting uncle blocks, if you're familiar with the concept, or by tracking gas fees, just as another, you know, rule of thumb. Um, so it does it automatically and it adds more shards. And once more shards are added, you can have kind of more throughput happening in parallel. This is all coordinated via a hierarchy of blockchains. So one of the big problems with sharding in general in blockchains is that once you split the blockchain into multiple shards, you want to still have a cohesive network. You want those shards to communicate between each other. So Quay Network come up, comes up with this hierarchy of blockchains. So let me kind of scroll down to it. So this is kind of how it looks like. Right now there is only one shard. And in this example, in this picture, there are nine shards. So the zones are the shards, basically. That's where all the transactions happen. But if you would like to communicate between the zones, and let's say you are happening here, but then your friends are transacting on this zone, you can just basically pass the information or the real basically you're relaying the transactions from zone to region and then you can go to prime and then prime transfers it to region and then to another zone so this region and prime kind of chains these are needed for communication between the shards to keep the whole network state so prime is the only chain that keeps the whole network state and uh, also to keep the security of the network. Right now, there is only one zone. So far, there hasn't been a need for such high throughput as more than one zone. But basically, when miners are mining even this one zone, they are mining prime region and the zone chain. Um, it happens in the background. You really don't need to think about it too much. Basically, it's a very neat way to make sure you have sharding, which allows it to scale. But speaking of like the theoretical maximum of scalability, the main reason why I started talking and getting you all into the forest of all this information, uh, each shard can process 500 to 1000 TPS, depends honestly on the exact transactions and what's happening on the network. But if we give it the 1000 TPS, it can be in total 256,000 TPS max theoretical. So that's more than enough and even if we are you know saying it's 500 i think it's been around 700 during testnet but even if we say it's 500 it's still over the amount of tps we are going to need in crypto and for a long while now that we have established that this is a super scalable proof of work network that's actually evm compatible as well just for developers to note here there is another feature that you really should know about, and you can see this project has been in development for a long time based on how many like features I have to talk about. <laughs> um, the feature is the dual token model and the energy linked flat coin called Qi. You can think of it as a crypto native and decentralized version of stable coins. And it's not exactly a stable coin, it's a flat coin. So stable coins have a hard peg to a very particular number, such as USDT, hard peg to USD. Flat coins don't necessarily have a hard peg to anything. They can be like choosing or tracking a particular thing. G in this case is energy backed and energy linked. So it's a true form of energy money if you think about it, because it is linked to the miners production costs, which are electricity. So basically the emissions of G are tied 
to how many miners there are on the network. And if there are more miners, more chi is emitted, fewer miners, fewer chi is emitted. And the whole kind of idea you can think about uh, like hashing is the algorithm of just, you know, mining is the process of hashing. So one chi is equal about 10 trillion hashes or something like that. So just, you know, pricing of chi is not in terms of dollars, it's in terms of hashes, um, which are in turn a kind of electricity because each hash is costing miners the energy that they put into it. I hope that made sense to you because there is one more feature of chi that is really neat and that's actually privacy. It's cache-like privacy. It's not exactly like Monero, it's slightly different. And I actually made a full video comparing chi cache-like privacy to Monero and Zcash. You can watch one of my previous recent videos. So there are two coins in the system. One is called Kwai and one is called Chi. And this dual model design is required to make sure that the system can maintain and function as a decentralized, you know, monetary system. Because that's what the Kwai ambition is, is to actually become an actual transactable layer that can function as money. So we have the private hash cash, that's Chi. That's what you have as a unit of account and medium of exchange. That's what you can price goods with. And Kwai is functioning as a store of value or the digital gold type of thing. And it's also EVM compatible, so it can support the applications that cannot be functioning on Qi. These functions are reflected also in the emission schedule of each. Kwai emissions are logarithmic. That means they slow down as more miners are joining in the future. And Qi emissions stay linear, so they just increase as miners increase at the same rate. It was a lot of information, so let me try to highlight some of the key points. It's a layer 1 blockchain with a work-based consensus mechanism. It can be mined by SHA-256 ASICs, Script ASICs, and GPU miners for Kapow hashing algorithm. It is EVM compatible for developers that can port their applications to Kwai. It is ultra-scalable to over 256,000 transactions per second. That's an approximate number. It also has a crypto-native alternative to stables that is actually mined and linked to energy prices. It's called Qi, the energy dollar. You can think of it as private hash cash. And now, since about 18 days ago, the subsidized open market acquisition protocol was introduced as a revenue engine, the first proof-of-work revenue engine on the whole crypto ecosystem. So that made Kwai top 7 on DeFi Llama by chain revenue already in less than 3 weeks. And uh, it's honestly kind of still climbing up. So let's see where it goes. So check it out. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.